Hey, campus. It's such a privilege, and I'm so grateful to be here and preach to you, even though I don't even deserve. But I want to thank Dimeji and Miriam for giving me this opportunity. My name is Stelian. I study psychology at Middlesex University. And next to me, I have my incredible and spiritual sister, Regine, that's at Westminster University. And today, we came to preach about obedience. Right? Uh, open your Bible to uh, Deuteronomy 10. Right? So we understand that obedience is reverence, right? So are you obedient? Or the question is, do you want to be obedient if you see yourself struggling right now? Because the Bible says in the same time, never be lacking in zeal. But I can't, I can't really see that now. The Bible says never be lacking in zeal. It does not matter how you feel. It says, never be lacking in zeal. And this is what I want to see, how you obey the Bible. In Deuteronomy 10, from verse 12, it says, And then now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and to, to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I, I am giving you today for your own good. So we can see that to walk in obedience to Him, it means to walk in His ways. What's your walk with God? Obedience in the world is viewed as something disgraceful. disgraceful. The definition is really just obedience is compliance with an order, request, a law. Submission to another's authority. Wow. Nowadays, if you accept anyone's authority over you, you show you're weak. Wow. And that's why this brings the self-autonomy, wow. self-reliance, independence. But we don't even see that actually obedience is something that is made for us. On, we need to have obedience. This is actually created and designed for us human beings. On, right? However, we don't care what the world says about us. We care what God says about this. And God says that obedience means love. That obedience means relationship. How is your relationship with God? How is your relationship with God? God does not want you to only go according to His law. And everyone's like, okay, I'm obedient. Yeah, I'm going according to His law. But no. Because in John 14, 15, it says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. In John 14, 21, it says, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. In John 14, 23, it says, Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teachings. So we can see that by obeying, it means loving God. Do you love God? How do you know how to obey Him if you don't love Him? You know, campus, we can be more concerned with university rather than loving God. Right? This was me actually this week. I was so stressed and overwhelmed and I was like, I don't even know what to do. So what I've done is just really staying all night in the studying and trying to make this, to get these grades, right? And then I really just neglected the times with God. And I felt myself very depressed, right? Why? Because I was independent. I didn't really meet anyone. And I was just really by myself and doing this. But again, we can see that um, even though when you're doing this, you can see that you're not obeying because you're not loving God. You don't care about giving uh, time to God. Do you see God wholeheartedly, even during, exa during exams? Because what I was seeking was my tutors for feedback, <laughs> but not God for love, right? When was the last time you had an all-night prayer? What about your all-nighter for your deadline? Right? Are you... Are you being a martyr right now? Are you being a martyr? You're just stressed about, oh no, what's happening with that module, whether the degree, with a lot of things. Instead of care about God, sit at His feet and just really listen to Him. Are you a martyr? We can see that Martha was independent. She was just doing by herself all the stuff and she was getting angry. She was stressed. She was overwhelmed with all the work. Why? Because she wasn't obedient. She was not really giving time to Jesus. We know that Jesus wants to get the time, and he wants us to sit at his feet. But we need to learn how to obey him by learning how to love him. I give you, Regine. Awesome. Good evening, family. Awesome. 
So I really like what Stellan was just sharing. The scripture that really helped me like the most, it was in verse 13 of Deuteronomy 10, and it's saying, and to observe the Lord's command and decree that I am giving to you today for your own good. And that really just put me in awe of the love of God, you know, because like it's that thing where we think that God is trying to make us obey him, like you have to do this and you have to do that, otherwise you're going to go to hell. But it's like, no, like this is for your own good. And God is so intentional about it. He's like, he wants us to prosper. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to really rejoice and thrive. And that's why he's putting the, like obedience in our life. That's why he put leaders in our life so we can actually go after obedience, you know. In Psalm 139, um, David was saying, God said that um, all the days are ordained for us were written in his book before one of them came to be. And again, it shows God intentionality, like the thing where like God is thinking, it's like, okay, like how can I make the, make the life of Regine and Stellian and Kate and Renish and Miriam, like the best possible, you know, God has really the best intention for us. But because we are so stiff neck, and like the rest of the scripture was saying in verse 16, stiff neck is really that thing. You, have you ever had like a stiff neck? You know, like you wake up in the morning, you had a bad night of sleep and you're just like, you know, like it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. And it's that thing where like you get irrit irritable, you don't want to do anything, you don't want to keep on going. Someone is telling you, yeah, you want a glass of water? No, like you don't want anything, right? And it's really like how we can look like spiritually when we're not walking in obedience, you know? And to be very honest, I've been very, very stiff neck in my discipleship. And for me, like I was like, yeah, like everything is going fine, but I was being very... Um, oblivious you know I wasn't really seeing how much God was actually calling me to obey how much God was calling was putting uh, people in my life to help me grow I was just focused on myself focused on my independence and that just really let me far away from obedience to God and the thing that really helped me later on it's in verse 16 and it says and it says um thank you guys <laughs> awesome and he says, uh, circumcise your heart, therefore, and do not be stiff-necked anymore. So there is a way out. There is a way forward. We don't need to be stiff-necked forever. We don't need to be the same, like, long, nonchalant disciple for our whole life. We can really change. And what really helped me is just really fasting and praying. Um, I'm very grateful for Miriam, who's just been, like, preaching the word out of me and just really taking, taking the stiff-neckedness stiff -neckness out of my neck, you know, and out of my life. Uh, and that really, really helped me just really saying, okay, like, God is really intentional. God God's love is really the reason why you obey. And if the love of God is not the reason why you obey, you really need to question your discipleship sisters and really understand, okay, like, am I really loving God? Am I really understanding the love of God? Am I really in touch with the love of God? And going through the, the period of fasting and praying really helped me get in touch. And then, like, understanding my independence. Where is this coming from? You know, independence for me really comes from deep, deep pride, you know, and just really saying, okay, like, I'm extremely prideful. A lot of people say I'm very humble. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm humble, you know. And no, sisters, like we need to really have a heart check and really say, okay, like where am I at? Do I really love God? Do I see God's love in my life? Because if we don't, it's going to be very easy to not trust the people around us, to not obey and being stiff-necked sisters. And that's not cute. So my practical for you, sisters, is really going after seeing what is that area in your life where you're not trusting God in. Seeing this, taking this, like take journal, journal about it. I had to journal about my independence and really see where it was coming from. Journal about your, whatever it is, and just really being able to uh, speak to disciples, speak to anyone around you, and just really see, okay, like, how can I actually surrender it to God and fully trust God and not rely on myself? And to God be all the glory. Amen. Amen. That was really, really incredible. And um, I have just a question for you guys. Do you believe... That Jesus is the Son of God, yes. But no, do you believe that your relationship with God can be so close that in only 24 hours you can bear fruit? God can produce a miracle in 24 hours. But do you believe that you're so close to God? Because again, I want to remind you that you being obedient is you being close to God. And you being close to God, it doesn't mean you're going to produce fruit. It is not you that produce fruit, but it's God. But what's going to happen? God is going to give it to you to bear it for him. Right? It says we're going to bear much fruit. But if you can't reach to God because you're far from him, because you're disobedient, because you're still necked, right? Then how can you really bear fruit? And I believe we all want to bear fruit. But again, it's all about your relationship with God. It's a time to recommit, to get devoted. And not distracted. To be obedient and not a comedian. Right? And, and, and I just want to ask you. Do you love God? 
Do you love God? Don't exclude Jesus from your discipleship. He should be the center. And as a, as a practical for you is come closer to him so he can bear much fruit. And to God be the glory. <laughs> Thank you.